Blinking lights, blinking lights, blinky, blinky, blinking lights, blinking lights. Blinking lights. Yeah, yeah. blinking blinkin lights. lights. Hey, YouTubers, blinking lights. I've got a long video today about a project that I had completed some time ago. It's a, basically an instruction video about how to build this thing. Um, so, if you're interested, go ahead. Otherwise, uh, this is an hour long thing of just building something. So, Maybe you want to wait for the next, like, little one. All right, thanks. Greetings, you potatoes. It's Green Home back with the first edition of Blinkin' Lights. And I thought I would start this channel with, you know, going going through basic electronics. Um, and actually, that's still my intention, but uh, just to get off the ground and get started a little bit, let's talk about uh, one of my projects that I've been doing lately. Um, actually since last year, since like September or something. So since September 2019, um, I've been doing this, uh, this project of actually producing a little project, a little product that I had made called the, uh, Etmega 8A electronic dice, as you can see here. Here's my instruction sheet. This thing was, um, was part of a birthday party, a a sixth grader, I believe, uh, my nephew, had asked for something electronic for his birthday, like a project that he could do with his friends, and I came up with this idea of making an electronic dice, and um, this was the end result. So I had a room full of sixth graders making this thing, so it's doable. So let's see what it really lo looks like. Boom! There you go. Whoops, it's a little hairy, but that's the finished product. Generally hairless. It's a hairless electronic product. What this thing does, uh, I will show you. Um, there's two functionalities in one. You get for no additional charge, an extra function. Let's see, how does this look under the light? Oh yeah, there you go. So you press this button here, and this is a four. <laughs> Next I'll make a sound unit for it. So this is this uses a pseudo random number generator to generate throws of the dice. Actually, I guess the dice, well, it can be any angle. So <clears throat> there's a lot of interesting technologies and techniques in the um, software that I wrote for this thing, uh, which I will post online. Well, it has been posted online in GitHub. I'll put it in the comments below the description section I mean but yeah there you go so and the additional no extra charges you push this button and if you want heads or tails boom heads heads again tails yes so now you can see that tails works yay all right so there you go um that's a little thing, and what we'll do is we'll go through how to build it. Now, what if you wanted one of these things? Well, I actually produced, in addition to the shoo, aforementioned instruction sheet, shoo, it's such a strong instruction sheet that it makes crazy noise when you put it in the screen. I made a whole kit. This thing this ship ready to go with all the components that you see here which I will also post in the description section the uh, the bill, bill of materials BOM um, and some links about where I got it from so without further ado without further spew let's go in and uh, crack open this thing this instruction sheet is basically you know, description of what to do, how to do it, blah, blah, blah. Whoops. Nice. Uh, don't bang the tripod. Bring them. All right. So, uh, but, you know, you can it's, you can look online. You can see this. Oh, good instruction sheet. The important bits, besides just a description of where to, where to uh, or how to wire it, is the... Basically, the step-by-step -step list here, which comes as part of the packet, it's also posted online, 
and from there you can build the whole thing. All right, let's dig into this bad boy. Now, generally, I've, I, I've, uh, in order to save a couple of bucks on shipping, which could be significant, I was hoping to get letter uh, uh, rates on this shipping. You know, you see these things come from China, and they're in skinny little envelopes. Um, and they basically don't cost anything to ship, but uh, and and the, the batteries are relatively heavy, so I wanted to ship batteries with it. Uh, I end, ended up not doing so, in the hopes of saving money. I didn't really, but unfortunately, I didn't get a lot of batteries. But obviously, those are available at your local Walgreens or what have you for not a whole lot of money. So. Um, yeah. Anybody else in there? You guys see anything new? Okay, let's be done. Okay, um, so I'm going to make this out of that. And if we look, I've got a packet of resistors here that I've taped up nicely. Various LEDs. Obviously, this one. Well, it looks like I have some extras. Yeah, I do. Uh, I actually packaged these up some time ago. Uh, let's see if we have, uh, with, we need uh, seven LEDs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Got them. Capacitors. We need a couple of switches. Good. So I'm going to be able to basically uh, QA my little project here right live online. This will not be live when you see this. Um, the chip is already installed in the breadboard, so let me get that out. Please hold while I extract chip from breadboard. Thank you. It's tight. Dun, dun. Do, 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 do. The song's probably copyrighted. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry to the copyright holders. Oh no. All right. Here you go. Boom. This is an Atmega 8A. Now, this entire group of components, uh, I forgot how much I spent on it. I think, well, I bought some of these things in bulk the LEDs, the chips and so on, uh, even these things. I think the whole enchilada, everything you see here in a single kit, can be had for somewhere between four to seven dollars online shipped from China, which is pretty phenomenal if you think about it. And if you don't, it's, uh, well, it's definitely phenomenal. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, now, I sell it for 15 bucks, and that's an interesting story in and of itself. Why would I charge so much for something that's, you know, basically costs so little from China? But, yeah, if you want to hear about it, I can tell the story, how I came up with my pricing. It's kind of interesting. I did this sort of as an ex exploration in how much it would cost to sell, a, um, to sell a product online, you know, that you created yourself. And uh, let me tell you, it's not easy. All right, so um, here's the instruction sheet, and here's my handy pencil. Come here, Mr. Pencil. Uh, oh, that's a lady pencil, Mrs. Pencil, excuse me, sorry. Uh, anyway, mechanical pencil, checklist, and here we go. So, first thing we gotta do, um, we're gonna connect a long black wire from negative to negative. Now this, these breadboards, you can see here, every, this, this little point on the breadboard is common. All these five points are common. So there's a little wire under there joining all, all five of them together. They're insulated coming down, but joined going across. Insulated here, joined here, Insulated go so this point is insulated from that point But this point is electronically identical to all its brethren or sistren 
in the row. Here, this entire column, let's say, we'll call it a column, is electrically the same. This is all one wire. Same with the plus, the pink. Down here you've got pink and blue as well. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our long wire and make this thing join up with that thing. Boom. I'm going to kind of bend it out of the way a little bit, a little bit so that it won't interfere with uh, you know, further work that's going to go. You can see from the finished product it's going to be fairly dense over there. So, step one is done. Step two, join up the positive rails. E, positive rail. Come on, positive rail. Positive rail. Now I don't join it right next to each other. I, I put a little distance on it. Just because if these things kind of leak out a little bit, and, uh, well, technically, actually, here's an even better idea. Why don't I do this? This keeps the wires from contacting each other in case of, you know, a little knockout. And <clears throat> I can look here. I can. I think that's pretty safe. So if the, if the wires were halfway sticking out, it would prevent short circuits. The two wires from touching each other. Okay. Now, we have short black from the negative rail to 30A. So here's 30. And there's A. So we're going to go from here to here. And you can see that I just sort of violated my little rule. So I'm going to have a short little piece of wire. That's actually not so bad because what I can do is I can go like this. And join it just a little bit of ways. Just as an added safety feature. If this thing was going to be tested by underwriters laboratories, I think it would pass. I actually used to work at Underwriters Laboratories. It's a pretty fascinating place. If you're ever going to plug anything into your wall, make sure that it's Underwriters Laboratories listed. Don't get a cheap Chinese power supply and then plug it, plug an unlisted power supply into your wall. That's my recommendation. All right, 30A is done, 30J. Here's J over there. Poppy top top to ta 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 Shooby dooby dooby. I only have one theme song that I sing while doing this sort of stuff. Of course I guess I should have another. There is the blinking lights theme song. Blinking lights, blinking lights, blinky 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 lights, get in there, you Blinking lights. I want to build blinking lights. Doosh. These things, this is actually, electronics can be a very heavy duty vocation. That's why there's so many heavy sounds. All right. Negative rail to 20A. Negative to 20A. Ooh. That is the negative power supply for the chip. This is the exciting part, where you know you're going to be powering up the chip. Oh, I'm going to constantly bump this, aren't I? I have a little, a little light box here that I'm using for uh, there we go for doing this for recording this video. You can see it's got this nice gray plane. Makes everything good. Makes everything nice and visible. Uh, but it's a box and I can bump it. Sorry about that. Negative rail to 19J. That'll be on the other side. You want to be pretty meticulous about your work so as not to cause anything to smoke nastily. You don't want any nasty smokage. You get nasty smokage, you're unhappy. Now here's where you can also get confused. There's a mistake that I've made maybe, maybe once in my life where you connect something that's supposed to go into the negative and you put it in the wrong spot for positive. 
that would be bad. You would be confused because your batteries would run out very quickly and nothing would happen. All right, 19B, a short red. Here's one. Hello, red. Huh, where are we going to be? I don't know. Huh? Like I said, anything in here is uh, electrically the same, so I don't have to plug it into B. I could plug it into A. Oh, because I'm following my little rule there of trying to keep these guys apart from each other. There you go. I don't put it right next to each other if I can avoid it. On something like that where a short circuit can happen, I'm, uh, I'm careful. All right, now we've got a bunch of short greens. So we're going to go 12E to 12F, 9E to 9F, blah, blah, blah. That's we're, What we're looking at is up here. Um, that's a little more important to get these sort of uh, situated in the proper holes because... You know, here I wasn't too too fussy about it, but here, up near the top, you can see that we're going to have a lot of stuff crammed together. So you don't want to get too creative with your wiring. 12E to F. A couple LEDs. Power for LEDs. Check. 9E to F. 9E to 9F. 9E to 9F. 9E to 9F. 9E to 9F. Let's do it. Let's power LEDs, man. What is more exciting than powering LEDs? If you can think of something, put it in the comments. I think the comments on that regard will be empty. Because... Powering LEDs is like one of the most exciting things in the world. All right, 6E to 6F. Hmm. Who manufactured this thing? That's an awfully long lead. 6E to 6F. Oh, kind of a long wire in there. I don't like how it's hanging out either. Well, boys and girls, I don't know if you have a nipper at home, but I've got a nipper in my home. Say hello to my nipper, courtesy of Radio Shack, <laughs> who did not sponsor this video, but whom I've loved for many years. I started at Radio Shack, getting stuff there when I was a kid, and when something like that happens, you're never far from your from your heart. Uh, six E, six F, boom. All right, did you hear that explosion? Boom. That's the sound of a wire going into place properly. They have their own iconic sounds. You don't believe me? Well, the next one goes from 2E to 2F. 2E to 2F. Boom, ha, told you, very iconic. All right. A short green from 12i to 9i. Short green, 12i to 9i. 12i to 9i, 12i to 9i, 12i to 9i. 12i to 9i. Is that for real? Oh yeah. So we're going up a ways. Um, ah yes, this is where you gotta be careful to follow instructions properly. Thankfully, they labeled it on both sides of the board. 12i to 9i. Nice. Boom, I should say. That was a little delayed. 9h to 6i. Ooh, slightly crookedy. For some very good reasons, I'm hoping. Mr. Blinken Lights. 9h to 6i. Oh yeah, well, one reason is because 9i is filled. 9h to 6i. I. Boom. <laughs> all right. So we're done with all the short greens. Yay. We are short green experts now. Look at that. 
What could be worse than being a short screen expert? Not much. It could be better. Absolutely nothing. Whoops! There's a little capacitor that tries to escape. Capacitors are very sneaky little components. You gotta watch them. Okay, the next we have some handy dandy resistors. 1.5K, that's 1,500 ohms. And these have been helpfully packaged here um, on, on this little card. Now, the 1.5K, we've got a couple of extra components just in case something goes awry, which it shouldn't. But uh, anyway, we're going from 2J to the negative rail, 1.5K ohm resistor. Um, we're going to have to open this somehow. Let's get a knife. Ex acto. Kids, if you have a uh, if you have a parent help you get some sort of sharp knife, get these bad boys out of here. These are definitely bad boys, these resistors. They're not good girls. Come on, resistor. This resistor is resisting my efforts to get it out of the bag. Or off the card. Hence the name, resistor. That's not really why resistors have a name. I think you could probably figure that out. But sometime in the future, I will make a video about resistors and really what they're for. This channel is about doing stuff. I don't learn a thing unless I'm doing it. Right now we're not doing anything, we're just playing. We're not learning that much, we're just playing, but in the future we'll be learning. And it will all have um, 2J to the negative rail. It will all have a, how shall I say, uh, instructional or lab component to it. I'm not doing anything without putting it on a breadboard or wiring it up and checking it out. So hopefully that will make it, you know, that much more interesting and uh, it will help you learn. Okay, 9J to negative rail. We're going 120 ohm resistor. Then we gotta get another one out. 120 ohms and not a single ohm less. That's not true. This is approximately 120 ohms, plus or minus, I don't know, a couple percent on these. I, forget, I don't know the color bands for these uh, five band resistors. You see they have, see this resistor has, uh, let's see if we can zoom in here. One, two, three, four, oops, don't point the knife at you. One, two, three, four, five colors in it. Okay, uh, 9J to the negative rail. There's J, negative rail. And by negative, we don't mean depressed and unhappy. This means that's where the electrons come squirting out of. Okay, now we're going with these things called jumper wires, 10 centimeter jumper wires. 10 cement centimeter being approximately four inches for those of you uh, taking notes in America. Um, huh, this one's got a little something something sticking out. Oh, the shroud came down. Okay, so uh, it really doesn't matter what color you use. I'm going to try and reserve the black ones. You'll notice that uh, there's a method to my madness. I have black going to negative, and it's also like the dark color over here, although that's blue, but anyway. Um, red going to positive. I think that's sort of a tradition in electronics. Um, has been a personal tr tradition of mine for many years. And, um, so I'm going to reserve the black ones, but we need one from 25D to 1H. 25D, doesn't matter what color I use, 25D, so right here next to it, to 1H. Ooh, 1H. All the way over here, is that right? Yes, I have it sneaking around. It's a sneaker. So that one's going to be sneaking around like this. Technically. Huh. It's 
a little longer there. That's because it has the, uh, this has longer, uh, these little shrouds at the end. Okay. 25D to 1H. Good. Let's go 24A to 1A. Let's do it. Definitely going 24A to 1A. Yeah. Why not? I'll observe. Red as well. 24A to 1A. It would be nice if I could get these little wires to be, you know, many more uh, different colors so I can reserve the black and the white, but unfortunately, to do that, there would be a lot of wasted wires because they come only so many wires to a package. If you buy them in bulk. All right, now I want to do a blue LED. I'm, I'm on step 18. The blue LED, like all these LEDs, has a short end and a long end. That means the negative is going to go in one side and the positive is going to be on the other. So these have to definitely go in a certain direction. And I specify that the short end goes into 2D and the long end goes into 1E. That's step 18. So uh, there's the long side is on your right. You can see that. So we're going to go 1E to 2D. 1E, 2D, 1E, 2D. 2 is down there. Boy, LEDs make the same noise as resistor or as wires going in. Boom. I know that. Ah, I'm gonna squish that because I can see that we're gonna have to put the next one very close. All right, that's 18. Likewise, we're gonna have a red LED. 2G to 1F. Short and 2G. 2G. 1F. I see what's happening. Can you see what's happening? 2G to 1F. And I just knocked something on the floor. Aha! And I need that. Got too many wires. Alright. Nice. Very nice. Aha! Now we're going to go to a place where we test. So, for those of you playing along at home, I presume that you have purchased some AAA batteries from Walgreens or your friendly neighborhood grocery store or where, what have you, wherever you can get them cheap. You still get them at Radio Shack. Actually, they weren't that cheap at Radio Shack, I have to say. Radio Shack is not where you went to if you wanted to get something cheap. Was where if you wanted to get something available. That's where I got my transistors, resistors, LEDs, integrated circuits. Doink. Bonico. You can get some super cheap big packs of batteries. I don't recommend these Bonico batteries, I'm afraid to say, and I've, I have offended the company by giving them a bad review. But I do have a number of spares of them because I did buy a large package. So we'll use them. Now this has been around for months and months and months, and I'm still on the original battery. So this is a very battery sipping, battery power sipping circuit. All right, so we're gonna put the negative. Now here's what's gonna happen. Once we put this in, we're going to see these LEDs blink. They should. There we go. So the little thing is telling us, it's alive! Wow. Kind of boring. What does it do, Great Ohm? We're bored out of our minds. Well, somebody's making a blasting noise outside. Sorry for the background noise. Well, anyway. We can pull this out. We can push it back in again. Boom. Blink. Oh, I guess it blinks once. I must have not made good contact. Okay, so 
So far, so good. And I'm going to uh, want to be very careful not to short out these batteries. Create a short circuit by connecting these two wires. So if I jiggle something and the wires happen to hit, they would short out. So what I've done is I've popped out one of the batteries. That way, even if they, even if these two wires touch, doesn't matter. Uh, there's not a complete circuit. So uh, now I've done the battery power. I've double checked. So step 22 says, very think very helpfully, remove battery pack, which I've done. Good job, Greenome. Very thoughtful. Oh, thank you. All right. Now we're gonna go. We got a whole bunch of jumper wires. 23G. 24G, 11J, 23H, 8J, blah, 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 they would say in Charlie Brown. So, uh, pull these bad boys apart. How do I know they're bad? They just are. Because they got bad grades in school. <laughs> All right, 24G. Ooh, 24G. Oh, where are you? 24G? 24G. FG. Oh, down there. FG labeled all over the place. 24G to 11J. 11J. Tush. Thank you for shutting off your machine, person. 23H to 8J. 23H to 8J. To J. 23H. Poo! 8J. 8J. Oh, that was an interesting. Interesting. Oh, they turned it back on. Oh. I'm filled with loathing towards that sound. 22I to 5J. 22I. 5J. Nice. 26H to 7A. 26H. To 7A. All the way over there. What? How could it be? But it is. Okay. 26A to 11A. Seriously? You've got to be kidding. No! What is it? 26A to 11A. Oh, 26A. 11A. Ooh. I see the integrated circuit is wanting to power up those LEDs. It's okay, Mr. Circuit. Got the integrated circuit, so it's a little calm. You'll be powering them in no time. Provided I did a good job. 22A to 8A. 22A to 8A. Is that right? Two of them right next to each other? Oh, yeah. Good job, Mr. Nomi Head. 21A to 5A. All right, now I'm going to... Now I'm... I'm uh, going to have to violate one of my rules and use one of these things for a non-negative lead. But that's okay. It's just a wire. But it does make me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Alright. I'm over it. Oh, wait. There's, a, there's one. 21A to 5A. Oh, much more comfortable. Yeah. Boom. Alright. So we did all these jumper wires. Now we got to go on to 30. 4.7 K ohm resistor. 19 C to 13 C. Here's 4.7 K ohm. My resistor pack. Get out my knife. Be very careful when you use your knives. Ladies and gentlemen, always away from you. Doink. Doink. Very nice. Put it away when you're done. Close the box. I'm doing that off camera. As you can tell. Shh, it's a secret. Off camera activity is taking place. 
All right. 4.7K ohm. Oh, we have a daughter. One moment, please. Okay, my daughter needed a treat. Very important interruption. Uh, that's fine. I said yes. Hey, what's life without a few treats now and then? All right, 19C to 13C. Where is 19C? Oh. So we'll go 19C to 13C. A, B, C to 13 A, B, C. No, Mr. No, you might have done this a little earlier in this construction process. Well, yes, except this is my first time actually building it from the instructions, so I'm sorry. Okay, well, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to kind of squeeze that over a little bit because I think we're going to be putting wires in there. All right, so the resistor is in. <clears throat> Ooh. Now we get to install dun, 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 the dice LEDs. We got the short and the longs. A familiar tale. A tale of shortness and longness. Of differences that we've all come to love in one another. All right, so we're going to go short 9D, long 7E. Short 9D. Where are you, 9D? Here you are. Short 9D, long. Wait, 9D. Short, long 7E, 7E to 9D. So I gotta kinda, 9D to 7E. Short in 9D, long in 7E. So I'm gonna pull these apart just a little bit. Maybe I'll make a nice little kink in it like that. Short 9D. Where are you, 9D? Long 7E. Yep. You get one of these blasted things m mixed up, and uh, troubleshooting it is annoying. I will tell you that. Okay. Nice. I like it. Short 12A, long 11B. Short in 12A. Long 11B. 12A, long 11B. Boy, that background noise. I'll bet you when I do this video, it's going to be really annoying. Sorry about that, folks. This is me learning how to YouTube. YouTube. Learning how to YouTube. Okay. Nice. And we're going to want to squish these down because this is a dice program. We don't want to see wires. Are you kidding me right now? Or what did I just do? 12A to 11B. Check. Short 9A, long 8B. Short 9A. There it is. Long 8B. Check. Checkity check. Checkity check, check, check. WLS boogie check. Check. Alright. Uh, 6A to 5B. Short 6A, long 5B. Yes, I can see it coming. See it all coming together. Boha, 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 ah, 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 My evil plan in action. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you folks, but this is an evil channel filled with evil electronics. Short 12G, long 11F. I hope that won't offend you. Uh, short 12G, long 11F. There's 11F, 12G. Yes. Next one. Let me mark that off. Short 9G, long 8F. Short 9G. Long 8F. Come along, 9G. Oops. Short 9G. You see how easy that is to do that? Yikes. But we'll see. If any one of these comes around wrong, I suspect all we'll need to do... We're going to arrange these a little bit to look like a die. Alright, and then we're going to go 
short 6G, long 5F. Short 6G, long 5F. Long, oops, 6G, 5F. Yeah, 6G, 5F. Boom. Okay. Really sorry for that annoying noise. I may just have to re-audio this thing. Or I'll just put an auxiliary video with uh, quieter background noise. Okay, now um, we've got to test it. So, and here again, I'm going to use what I think is good practice. I'm going to wire it up. And nothing's going to happen. Why? Because my battery is not hooked up. So my power is not, my power is connected, but my power is not live. Okay? Make sure that your power is in the right spot. You know, you don't do something crazy like put them together in the same hole or in the same row, column, what have you. That would be bad. You would just get a short circuit. All the electrons would run from one end back to the other, and the batteries would run out very quickly. It's not good. All right. So... Now we're going to double check. Well, we double checked that we put it in the right rails. Now we're going to test. Doom, turn it on. Ooh. Well, look at that. All right. So I can see that two LEDs are not lit up at all. That's no good. I'm going to unplug this. And did our red and blue ones light up? I don't know. Let's see. Yes. Okay, so what's wrong with you two? I did something wrong. Oh, nice one. It's easy to do, people. Easy to do. So this is 6 and 7 and 8 and 9 on the F side. Oops, 6 and 7. No, that's... Oh. Oh. Is that what I did? That's what you did. Huh. I went two, one down too far. Six and seven should be five and six. Eight and nine should be whatever it should be. Uh, let's see, seven and eight. No, eight and nine it says. Short nine G. There we go, short nine G. Long. I'm going to say 8F. Yes. Okay. Huh, did I have that in the wrong spot? Is it backwards? Let's see what happens. Ah, there we go. Nice. So we can pretty that up. So what it's doing right now is it's doing sending a code. Um... Well, it's sending a code, and it's actually printing out a a, a, a a byte code. You'll notice that the greens blink eight times. Here, I'll show you that again. And that's all in that's in the source code of this thing, which I will post later. Whoops. One, 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 seventh one, eighth one. Okay, so that's a byte. Eight bits in a byte. A byte of all ones. That's what populated. That's what's populated in this thing. Um, later, as per the source code, we'll be seeing a different binary number. But anyway, that's getting into the nitty gritty right now. So 38 and 39 are done. Now we're going to remove the battery pack. Step 40. Uh, and, and again, before I do that, so I don't short anything out, I'm going to make this power supply no longer active. So we're on the second sheet. All right, now we're going to go 20, 28F to 17D. 28F, F. F, yes. To 17D. D. Huh? Oh, yeah. 17D. Excellent job, Mr. Noomi. Boom. Okay. Then we're going to go 
42 is 28E to 16D, step 42. 28E E Yes, to 16 D B Alright, now that's okay to be right next to the resistor because the outside of that resistor is insulated and there won't be any short circuits there. So I'm not worried about the proximity of those wires. As I would be if there were two wires. Alright, now, the next is a disk capacitor, which is this thing, near the negative and positive rails, near the short red wires. So, um, that's this one here. Technically, I can actually put it in here, but... Uh, you want to go from the negative rail to the positive rail. There. You know what? This thing is this thing is a little bit of a protective um, capacitor. I'm going to actually put it right next to the integrated circuit. It's it's uh, if you'll notice, this little wire goes to the negative rail. So this is essentially the same as the negative rail, and this little wire goes to the positive rail. This is essentially electrically, technically. It is the positive rail, um, but I want it as close to the integrated circuit as possible because of various circuit influences that you wish weren't there, but they are. So, um, I'm not going to get into this, the details of that, but trust me when I say that uh, on the edges of electronics, things can get kind of ugly, and that's what we need these little guys to help us out. All right, the electrolytic capacitor, it's a little less um, less critical. You can see here that there's a negative side. It's labeled. This, this side has no label whatsoever. Um, so this would be the negative side. We want to put it into the negative rail. Um, and also, you'll notice that the, uh, the, the, the leads are somewhat spaced apart. So I'm just going to kind of pop it in how it fits making sure that the negative side, there it is, goes into the negative rail. Excellent. And the positive side, whoa, why are you so hard to get in over there? These things aren't always the most outstanding little holes. Huh. Are they really that long of leads? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, there you go. Uh, try not to squish them like what I just did. Try not to squish your wires. Are good if you can bend them carefully back all right switch we have two switches one to 28b 30b 28g to 30g so 28b so that would be here at the end 28 to 30b doink and oh interesting switches make doink noises um i didn't realize switches had such noises Oh, it says G to G. I'm going to go H to H. Get it out of the way of this wire. Huh. 28H to 30H. i got to fix that. See what happens when you test things, ladies and gentlemen? All right. Well, wow. That's it. Now we have a kind of Arduino E at Mega 8A. That's the name of this chip. Dice game doohickey thingy that we just built um theoretically if i did everything right well not theoretically practically technically in the real world if i did everything correct this is going to work it's going to be beautiful and it's going to be lovely all right i just plugged it in <gasps> nothing happened why because of my safety feature that's good you forget things you have little safety features that you were thinking of 10 minutes ago. All right, let's see what we do here. Did our blue light come on again? Make sure everything is right. I'm gonna unplug it for a second. Now this capacitor stores energy, so I'm gonna leave it off for just a second. Make sure that power went down, it did not. So, Mr. Capacitor, I'm going to short you out. Take all the juice out of there. Oops, look what I did. How ugly is that? Oh! How crazy is that? I'm not doing a good job with you. 
Senior Capacitator. Sorry about that. All right. Do as I say, not as I do, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I say don't mess up the leads of these devices. I think that one's just extra long, so I thought I could push it in farther. But anyway, okay, let's see if the red and blue one come up. Oh, yeah. There we go. That looks lovely. These guys are a little off kilter. Kind of move these wires around. All right, we're done. That's our self-test. Our circuit has started. And now, so what's happening right now is the, is the uh, little chip, that little computer right there. Oh, let me do that again. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, the, uh, the little chip is, um, it's got a timer built in. And it's counting down. And if you don't do anything for 20 seconds, it's going to shut off. It's going to preserve those batteries. So you don't have to have to do anything to preserve your battery life on this thing. It does it automatically. And then when you press this button, it triggers this to wake up, and it will start working. And you don't have to worry about that either. Um, so there's no on-off switch. It's built into this to this circuit. Okay, let's uh, let's run a number, shall we? Now, since because this this little number, this little code here that you that you see when the thing is first per powered on um, is what's is reflecting what's called a random number seed, which means that the very first roll for every one of you, every time you use this thing, should be exactly the same. And let's see what it is. Ready? On your mark, get set. <laughs> so you should roll a two. Um, I'm going to roll this a few more times. What I'm doing right now is I'm actually changing that number. In this sequence, everybody should be getting exactly the same sequence. Until I press it four times. How many times did I press it? Five? Six? I don't know. All right. Awesome. It works. Yay! Wow. All right. How cool is that? Um, and I did have a little glitch, which I'm glad because uh, we always have glitches. All right, now I'm going to do something. I'm going to unpower this. I'm going to make sure it's super unpowered. So I'll take some piece of metal and I'll get all the charge out of this capacitor. There we go. You are now chargeless, capacitor. I'm sorry, but don't fret. I'm going to charge you up very shortly. This is a much smaller capacitor, so it's probably not holding any charge at the moment. I don't need to worry so much about okay. that one. Okay, now watch. This one's got a little... Zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero. That number should be unique to this circuit. And actually, it's only one of four numbers like that. So there's, well, I don't want to get too far into the weeds, but there's 32 bits of numbers, and I'm displaying the, the last one, um, the last of four. So now, this roll should be unique to one out of, like, whatever that is, four billion circuits. Six. Well, obviously. <laughs> what am I thinking? There are only six rolls of the dice. So if I had, a, uh, if I had uh, 36 out of here, uh, 36 of these, if I had sold 36 of these and there were 36 in the wild, the distribution would be such that six of them on the very first roll after powering up should show the number six. Everybody should be random, in other words. It's all statistical. Okay, cool. Well, hey, look, it just shut off. Let's roll, have another roll of the dice. Boom! All right, so now you can use this for your favorite game. Uh, go down below. Go purchase one if you want. I actually have only four. Go purchase the components and build one for yourself. It's fun. And as you can see, it's not too hard. Well, that's my first real technical video uh, please don't forget to subscribe because uh, subscribing is awesome so they say and um, well I'll catch you on the next one where we start getting into uh, whatever it is that we get into what I want to get into is is the electronics although as you can see I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of fascinated by this Arduino stuff um, and, well, let me just say a few other things about this. This, this little circuit, my intention is in, in the upcoming videos is to demonstrate 
um, creation of Arduino based circuits. Now you can get a uh, you can get a real Arduino. Let me show you one of those. Actually, this is not a real Arduino. Well, this is a real real Arduino plus other stuff. So, <laughs> okay, this is other stuff. I got two chips talking to each other here. But this is an Arduino Due Milanove. 2009, one of the older ones, um, essentially an Arduino Uno. Um, here's the chip in there and stuff. But this is, uh, you know, you can get clones of this for, I don't know, five or ten bucks or something. This is, you know, from the Arduino folks. Uh, this is a, a $20 board. I highly recommend getting one of these things and supporting the Arduino uh, developers in the Arduino community. It, they're awesome. It's awesome. Uh, but I think. If I want to do 20 projects with Arduinos, if I want to do battery powered projects, this thing, you can see all the circuitry and all this other stuff on there. This thing is a, a uh, kind of a power suck. And it's also obviously, um, you know, trying to trying to afford 10 of these things. Now you're in the, to the $200 range. Okay. I don't want to do that. Um, I think those are 20 bucks each anyway, but you know, whatever, if they're 15, if they're 10, 10 of them, that's your hundred bucks. Look, I bought these things for, um, under a buck at Ally Express. Now, uh, there is, there is a danger of, of, um, counterfeit of chips online, uh, from China, which is, uh, if somebody can tell me how you might tell if this chip is, is counterfeit, I would be interested to know. But anyway, um, even even from the major distributors where you, theoretically they should be, you know, uh, not counterfeit, they should be the real chips from Atmel, those are, are going for two bucks. So if you want to get 10 of them, bam, you're out 20 bucks, which is uh, essentially what an entire Arduino uh, breadboard will cost you. So for a large number of projects, you know, I got a couple of them here. I've got a whole bunch more of them sitting elsewhere in my house. Oh, here's some right in my, or my pile of parts. So I got all sorts of chips waiting for fun projects. You can use these things. Um, as you can see, I'm, I'm doing low power, um, low power, low cost. How do we get a low cost Arduino? How are you able to make projects galore and not break in the bank? That's what you're going to discover on this channel. So, uh, for this first one, not too much uh, instruction, I guess. Just a little bit how to of uh, not in, not electronics instruction, but just to uh, to demonstrate a project that I've done. Um, if you're lucky, you can pick one up, and then you could use it with your favorite board games. You can use it for risk. Look, if you're the attacker. You have to go four, six, one. So six, four, one. Now, what does the defender get? Roll the defender dice. Two. Uh, you get to roll two dice. Five. Ooh, the six beats the five. Did we get another. Oh, five and three. Six, four, one beats five and three. Ah, oh, defender lost two armies. Sorry, defender. Oh, no. Oh, should I just quit? Heads or tails? No, I'm going to go on. All right. Anyway, that's my project. I hope you like it. Links below. Look for links below. Um, I've also um, got this posted, I've also on, got my this posted on my website. And, uh, and if you uh, like it, give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up. There's my crinkly old thumb. thumb. Hello. Hello, hope you enjoy Hello, hope you enjoyed the video. And um subscribe. Yeah, thanks. See ya. Um this would also make a, an interesting test bed for or uh, an interesting project bed for doing other projects. So maybe we'll do some of that too. All right. Who knows what the future will bring. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Have a lovely day. Bye. Oh, subscribe. Just hit the subscribe. Okay, so I'm going to do a little, a little uh, giveaway. Here's how it's going to work. In the email address that you see here, or here, wherever it is on the screen, uh, send, send me an email and um, subscribe to the channel and tell me in the email, hey, I've subscribed and I want the free absolutely no cost to you tell me that you want the project that i built on the youtube channel
And if you're the first one to send me an email and to tell me that you subscribe, and if you want this project, I will send it to you. But first, I'm going to wait a week and all the viruses on it will die, and then I will send it to you in the mail. That'll take another few days. So by the time it gets to you, probably be 12 to 14 days. All right? Okay, good luck. What do you want? I don't know what you want. What do you want? Tell me what you want. Tell me that you want this. <clears throat> Tell me you want.